Hi, this is Mark, and I am here at the yoga room at my gym, and I'm doing the reading from the Golden Present Daily Inspirational Readings by Sri Swami Satchidananda. <clears throat> Moving into the final weeks of this 365-day video project, recording a video of each daily reading. These are all uh, sectioned by uh, per day, and Swami Satchidananda shares some thoughts, and then I share mine in the moment. I don't plan ahead. I don't edit these. It's just <clears throat> in the moment. So this is November 30th. <clears throat> and the topic is spiritual practice is not what you are doing, but what you are thinking. <clears throat> mm. When you repeat your mantra, you should feel I'm not doing it for my sake. I am doing it to train my mind. If I train my mind, I can serve better. So even your mantra repetition becomes an offering. I'm doing everything as an offering to God, Guru, and humanity. Then you don't make distinction between, ah, this is sadhana, this is spiritual practice, this is not. Sometimes we say, oh, I don't have time to do sadhana. I'm always working on the bulldozer. So what is bulldozing then? You're working on the bulldozer dozer is not spiritual? Do you think that only by going into a corner and closing your eyes and murmuring something you are doing spiritual practice? Spiritual practice is not what you are doing but what you are thinking. Remember that. If you could understand the meaning of sadhana, you would know how to do it. You don't have to change your activities and say, this is sadhana, but this is not. Even your eating, even when you sit on the toilet, you are doing sadhana. Remember that. <laughs> Everything becomes a spiritual practice. You should transform all our activities into this kind of sadhana. That means I am doing everything as a meditation, as an offering, as a prayer to serve God through service to humanity. I wouldn't even say to humanity, do it as a service to the nature. Why only humanity? Humanity means only human beings. Serve the dog, serve the cats. Serve the rats, serve the mosquitoes, serve the plants, be nice to them, be loving. Even if you have to pull out a weed, do it in a loving way. Well, this is part of what I appreciate so greatly about Swami Satyananda's perspectives, is that there can be some of us who get into rigid thinking about what is practice, what is sadhana is your daily practice to help bring in mindfulness in your life is it this very formal specific learned practice or can it be integrated into everyday life from even you know practicing while you're sitting on the toilet and we tend to think that it's it's only in this area i think we have this very compartmentalized type of thinking but the more that it can integrate into life, this idea of you know, not only off the mat into the world, but that all of it is actually the same practice because it's all based off of the way we're thinking about it. So how we're thinking on the mat, how we're thinking out in the world, how we're thinking when we're sitting on the toilet. You know, are we allowing ourselves to really be present and let the body relax so that we can go to the bathroom fully? You know, or is there still anxiety and stress running through our mind and it's disturbing, you know, even that? So how can we practice something? It does seem that the formal practices help to allow us to figure out how to weave it into other parts of life. So as long as you have this very grounded um, and supported practice that is isolated from everything else for just a short period, it does seem that that helps us to know how to at least have that feeling, have that experience somewhere in our life. Some people have found it, you know, through artistic activity. I know when I was painting, I would just be in a zone and I would just be all focused on that. Every now and again, thoughts would, you know, linger uh, around some other topics and then they would just diminish because the focus came back into moving color, creating form, line, shape and it just became its own language. And this can happen with cooking, it can happen when being with children, 
being with a loved one, you know, other activities where you do feel this pure sense of yourself connecting and communing with whatever that activity is. Being out in nature, of course, is a you know, huge practice. And I love that he shifted this to say, you know, I wouldn't even say humanity, do it to the do it to do it as a service to the nature, to nature, and recognizing that there's so much that is existing in our natural world that actually is just there as our teachers at all times. You know, noticing the how things are uh, are born, how things decay and die, the ebb and flow of things, how things withstand the ele the elements, the natural elements in the world, how they get disrupted, how they reform, they rebuild themselves. So there's a lot in nature that we continue to be able to learn from if we can observe and quiet ourselves enough and make that moment to commune with something that helps elevate our understanding of who we are. So those practices slowly by slowly become something that we can start to notice in all of our activities. Even if we're getting into an argument or feeling frustrated or we're in a tough situation, can we at least bring in breath in that moment, bring in something that you can remember from the practice, something you can remember from nature, you know, something we can remember from holy scriptures, you know, this too shall pass. And it's usually from that experience that we get stronger. There's resilience. There's awareness, there's acceptance, and then compassion for others who may go through the same things. And then willingness and desire to be of service because we want to be able to be there for others, knowing what it's like. So there's this natural cycle that the spiritual practices recognize exist all throughout our, our life, our being, and that we will have difficult moments. We will see things that challenge our thinking we will hear things that challenge our thinking. We will even have actions that we do ourselves that challenge our thinking. And what can we do to keep finding a way to come back to alignment, come back to that sense of the true self that has knowingness, knowingness of our, our perfect place in this world. You know, we're meant to be here. For some reason we're here, it may seem messy and uncomfortable at times, it may also um, balance in just the right time that we remember the joy and the, the simple things in life. It doesn't always have to get so complicated. That's just the mind. So we do practices that help. All right, I hope this was helpful for your mind and your day. It's useful in any way. I am grateful to get to share these teachings. So thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.